Now, once the disease is suspected on clinical grounds, what is the test of choice to screen for Kahn syndrome? What is Kahn's? Kahn's is adrenal adenoma. Right? Adrenal adenoma. So, typically, whenever the Kahn's syndrome is there, then that releases excess aldosterone. Normally for the aldosterone release, who is required to tell it? Renin. So typically in the glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, juxtaglomerular cells are there. They need to release the renin. Renin need to go and stimulate the release of aldosterone. But in Kahn syndrome where there is an adrenal adenoma, right? There is a release of aldosterone without a need of renin. In fact, renin gets suppressed. So, high aldosterone with a low renin is equal to cons. Tell me the second situation. Suppose if you are a dehydrated, hypovolemic individual, then the blood flow to the kidney decreases. That stimulates the release of renin that in turn will increase the release of aldosterone. So, increased aldosterone with increased renin, what is that condition called as? Secondary hyperaldosteronism, which typically occurs whenever you are dehydrated or hypovolemic is what you need to basically appreciate. So, plasma renin activity and plasma aldosterone. What is the combination you expect to happen in cons? Low renin with high aldosterone is the combination you are looking for. Now, in uh, COPD when you do pulmonary function testing, typically COPD is a state of capture of air in the lungs. So, residual volume increase, total lung capacity increase, that is how you recognize a hyperinflated lungs in the COPD. In SLE of all, it is the Smith antibody which is considered to be most specific case what you need to remember. For the primary Raynaud syndrome where there is a vasospasm, we use nifedipine which is a calcium channel blocker to relieve the vasospasm. Now, in Huntington's chorea, what is the main problem? There is a trinucleotide repeat, CCG, C A G, uh, CAG repeat, correct. So, uh, unnecessarily those trinucleotides are being uh, wrongly created and repeated in the genome. So, that lead to development of all the problems, neurodegeneration, dementia, etc., etc. And that uh, wrong repeats will be more and more as the generations come down. So, that is the reason the disease may be milder in grandfather, late in onset, but it will become more severe in grandson and early in onset. And what is this phenomena where the severity increases as you go down the generation called as? Phenomenon of anticipation is what need to be remembered. Now, what is the expected pattern of liver function tests in alcoholic hepatitis? AST, more than twice the ALT. In most of the other hepatitis, ALT elevation will be more than AST. But alcoholic liver disease, AST will be more than ALT. S means surapanam, suras and asuras. So, suras are devatas. They drink morning to evening. So, yes is Sara, otherwise alcohol, right? So, easy to remember. Yes, sir, yell, yes, sir, yell, bolke. Exam hall may will be banging the head to the table because our entire life will depend on yes, sir, yell. Too much, no? Huh? So, no life is dependent on anything, doctor, remember. You get seat or you don't get seat, you are already excellent. You are all accomplished. Remember, uh, being uh, having finished MBBS successfully, 
after that the md is next step dm is another step right so yesterday night we had a uh, 25 years back august 7th we joined in uh, gandhi medical college i joined initially and went to kakatiya medical college later so gandhi medical college we celebrated a silver jubilee 120 batch only 35 guys turned up after 25 years four people died that's a sad story so what we thought is at least we are alive there is a good news you know so all competitions are before and someone will become uh, a civil surgeon in government somebody will be doing a oncology professor in california or pittsburgh somebody like me will be sitting with students like you and uh, once more a, a for apple b for boy i will be studying throughout life so but ultimately everyone will achieve some or the other uh, domain a little early little late etc so there is a reason um, be contented identify your goals and uh, be very specific in preparation another 4 months time august september october november happily 150 days are there 120 days are there happily you can sit to focus and study to expect you to be focused more than 4 months is uh, foolish on my part right but expecting you to be focused for 4 months is at least 4 months is reasonable expectation so please do that hmm? so vague periumbilical pain is a typical presentation of hypercalcemia hypercalcemia can cause renal stones and uh, lead to pain actually glucose must be there in the question for every 100 mg of the glucose above 100 the sodium levels decrease by 1.6 mg per liter whenever glucose is there typically it is an osmotically active substance and uh, because of that osmotic effect uh, hyperglycemia is associated with hyponatremia right so uh, it decreases by 1.6 ml per liter because glucose pulls the water out of the cells into the intravascular space and that dilutes the concentration of sodium sodium concentration in plasma is what sodium divided by in milliequivalents divided by plasma volume if excess glucose is there it will pull the water from the cells into the intravascular space denominator is the plasma volume in calculating the sodium concentration hence as a ratio it will come down that's what you need to remember that is sodium concentration how much means 1.6 milliequivalents per liter a 52 year old colic left flank pain and radiation to the inner thigh and groin ct scan shows a white spot and it is a urate crystal so how do you manage urate crystal alkalinization of the urine is a wonderful way by which you can handle and manage the urate crystal a 40 year old without any combinations comorbidities is having cml so what is the most appropriate treatment for him so typically in cml young patients if they have a donor ready to hla match a donor is available they don't have any other comorbidity then they are the best candidates for stem cell transplant instead of giving chemotherapy that is the way we you typical age group of presentation of cml when will it be 30 35 40 right aml can also in any age it can occur but cll in the geriatric patients all in pediatric patients that's how you divide then what are the chemotherapeutic agents that you can use in cml you can use citarabin buosulfan hydroxyurea is what you need to understand if there is a ggt elevation then what is it caused by one of the indicators of the alcohol induced liver injury is elevation of gamma glutamate uh, transaminase or transpeptidase t means 
GGT. Uh, GGT it is more famous known as GGT. Okay. Now, what is the most important intervention in case of ventricular tachycardia? Whenever ventricular tachycardia is a broad complex, QRS complex is broad tachycardia, then uh, you should look for the BP. If hemodynamically unstable, you have to do cardioversion, not defibrillation. What is the difference between defibrillation and cardioversion? In both the cases, you are delivering electric current to the heart, 200 millivolts. But in case of defibrillation, how will be de defibrillation? It will be like this, something, very zigzag pattern. Whereas, uh, ventricular tachycardia, it will be, the waves will be coming like this. So, in case of VT, if you want to use the, deliver the electric uh, current, the machine will identify where is the R wave. When the R wave comes, then only the shock get delivered. Why do you do that? Suppose if the electric shock is delivered during the time where after the R and uh, before the next R and uh, in the place where T is expected, then that will lead to VT to become a VF. Ventral tachycardia becomes a fibrillation. That is the reason when the power is delivered, it is delivered at the time when R is available. I mean, you need not look into where is R, where is R and then karne ka jarat nahi hai. Machine itself will not deliver if it is not R. If the R is there, then that will fire the delivery. So, in sync with R, the electric current being delivered is called cardioversion. Whereas in fibrillation, there is no recognizable R anywhere. So, that is the reason there you will simply format just like your hard disk. Defibrillation is being simply shock is being delivered. Sometimes heart will revert. Right? So, that is what uh, you need to know. But if patient is having VT but hemodynamically stable, then you can give medical treatment. What is that? A for amiodarone. B for bretillium, L for lignocaine, right? A shock, B shock, 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 shock. Huh? So that's what you need to remember. To confirm the suspicion of pernicious anemia, how will you do that? We do the Schilling test, but we don't do it anymore. Only for MCQ they will ask this question. Now, uh, 58 year old. 10 kg weight loss, right sided pleural effusion, mediastinal lymphadenopathy, there is a chylothorax. The most common underlying cause for the development of the chylothorax is the underlying lymphoma. And typically, it is the non Hodgkin's lymphoma in this given case because there are uh, B symptoms, constitutional symptoms like fever weight loss, they are all called constitutional symptoms. Then uh, 24 hour radio iodine uptake in subacute thyroiditis of D quervain typically will show a low RAIU is what you need to appreciate. Then uh, chest pain with uremic pericarditis is an indication in itself, uremic in a CR of patients with uremia, pericarditis is one of the indications for dialysis. Then uh, 36 year old from Dairadun has got platelet count of 12,500. Pancytopenia is there. So it is a case of aplastic anemia and bone marrow biopsy will show you the fatty infiltration. Intermittent hemolytic anemia with recurrent venous thrombosis along with pancytopenia. So, what is the underlying cause? Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, PNH. What is the problem in PNH? Normally platelets, normally RBCs are resistant to the complement mediated lysis. Because they have a decay acceleration factor in their cell membrane, which protects whenever the RBCs are released into plasma, they from getting lysed by the our own complement. 
But in the patients who have PNH, when the RBCs are created in their bone marrow, manufacturing जब हो रहा है, bone marrow behaves like a Chinese factory, production defect. So that's called stem cell defect. So what is the defect? The decay acceleration factor that need to be there in the cell membrane, no, that won't be available because of the genetic level defect at the level of the bone marrow while at the time of production. So such an RBC without a decay acceleration factor released into plasma will be attacked by the complement and broken down and patient develops hemolysis. Because of that he presents with hemolytic anemia. But the same problem of PNH which is a stem cell defect also predisposes to aplastic anemia. And the same patients can end up in chronic myeloid leukemia. It's a risk factor PNH. PNH patients are also vulnerable for it's a prothrombotic state. So they will have recurrent venous thrombosis. So what is the combination that you have recurrent venous thrombosis, pancytopenia because aplastic anemia is a risk factor along with intermittent hemolytic anemia. Why intermittent hemolytic anemia in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria? This complement mediated lysis occur only in the night. Morning may hota nahi. Why? Why? Because in the night, the patients when they are sleeping, their respiratory rate will be low. Whenever your respiratory rate is high, you will exhale the CO2. If the respiratory rate is low, you contain the CO2. CO2 become carbonic acid. Acid will decrease the pH. The blood become acidic when we go into sleep. And that acidic pH is required in the blood for the complement to go and attack the RBC. That's the reason this lysis occur only in the night is what you have to basically understand. So, what does the HAM test, HAM acidification test will do? Very simple. You take the patient's serum, acidify it and it will show hemolysis. That's called HAM's acidification test of PNH. Okay. How many answered it wrong? Raise the hand. This question wrong. Alright. One, two, three. Some of you didn't take the paper. Okay. So Ashwini, Rituras, and many more who are all online. A 70, 17 year old man from Agra with fatigue and pillar, then uh, elevated MCHC, elevated RDW and elevated LDH. So what is the most appropriate treatment in him? So what he is having is increased mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. That's an important clue. Increased MCHC when will occur? What is MCHC? Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Normally, RBC is a biconcave disc. Biconcavity increases the surface area. In hereditary side, a sphere it will become. So, surface area decrease. So, what is concentration of hemoglobin? Hemoglobin content divided by the volume of the RBC. So, whenever it is a is equal to MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So, whenever a hereditary serocyte forms, that will decrease the volume of the RBC. And what happens to this ratio? The denominator decreases, increases. So, increased MCHC is a clue to say that this is a case of hereditary spherocytosis is what you need to basically understand. Now, AVNRT. So, in a silver jubilee celebration, we drank so much alcohol that last 25 years whatever is due, we finished in one night. 
so all my classmates are deeply snoring and sleeping uh, but i have uh, no other choice i have i have to come back to deliver a lecture so uh, at early morning 3 o'clock i said goodbye guys uh, uh, and uh, had a short snap but that hangout is still there this is not what i am so but still we tell students no as students what we will tell even if a night duty is there post night duty some time you have to stretch to study next four months should be like a war footing so even as a teacher we should uh, show that we have that stamina and we did like that and uh, uh, cracked the entrances so that's the point but you need to have all aspects of life a little fun little dance little hangama and uh, once more uh, back to academics and practice hmm? so avnrt what is the next important intervention to treat in a hemodynamically stable patient what is avnrt atrio ventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia so it is a supraventricular tachycardia above the level of the ventricle so how do you treat that supraventricular tachycardia adenosine is a wonderful drug is what you need to understand now what is the characteristic ecg finding in hypokalemia shortening of qt is not the finding all hypos lead to lengthening of qt please remember whether it is a hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypokalemia low electrolyte will lengthen the qt because it will cause the slowing down of repolarization now hyperkalemia what are the important causes decay rhabdomyolysis beta blockers but type 2 which is a proximal renal tubular acidosis you have hypokalemia even distal renal tubular acidosis which is called type 1 you have hypokalemia only so these are these two are called hypokalemic periodic uh, renal tubular acidosis is what you need to understand what is wrong about cluster headache cluster headache migraine tension headache you must know the fundamental difference migraine is common in females but cluster headache is more common in males there's a beautiful cluster headache video in the youtube ek bar dekho cluster headache the patient virtually was unable to uh, handle the degree of pain degree of pain will be like flush torn out of your uh, face and he was tossing in the bed with uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, walking restlessly there is migraine chup chap pillow ke andar head laga ke dark light karke so jate cluster is not like that he will be tossing he will be falling he will be crawling on the floor itna severe headache hota so that is cluster more common in males the moment they say male presenting with headache means idhar udhar dekho mat straight you have to go and hit the cluster headache right now subarachnoid hemorrhage mein hyponatremia hota hai because any intracranial pathology like a tumor space occupying lesion subarachnoid hemorrhage there are all the risk factors for the development of sadh inappropriate adh production and that lead to development of hyponatremia is what you need to remember so protein is more than 200 glucose is less than 40 opening pressure is 200 classical of tbm so definitely they will ask a question on pyogenic tb viral fungal meningitis and what are the serious findings you have to be 100% sure doctor middle cerebral artery stroke what is the wrong statement gaze preference will be to ipsilateral side so stroke can occur in two locations what are the locations and the how will that affect the uh, gaze gaze typically it can occur in the uh, cerebral cortex okay then whenever the uh, bleed occur in the cerebral cortex 
For example, this is the left side cerebral cortex. The both eyes will be deviating with a conjugate gaze. As such, it is looking towards the bleed. Right? Whenever the bleed occurs at lower level, that is, for example, at pontine or midbrain level, brainstem level, if the bleed occurs on the right side brainstem, then the eyes will be deviated away. Contralateral conjugate gaze will be there if the brainstem lesion is causing the has the hemorrhagic stroke. If the cerebral cortical stroke is there, then the eyes are looking towards the stroke is what you need to basically understand. Posture cerebral artery stroke may what will you find? Same side third nerve palsy will be there. Posture cerebral artery stroke may. Why? Two vertebral arteries become a basilar artery. Basilar artery divides into posture cerebral artery. Basilar artery is the one which provides the blood flow to entire brainstem. Brainstem, the uppermost part is midbrain, then pons, then medulla. So, uppermost part of the midbrain is the place where the posture cerebral arteries are originating. So, they give branches to midbrain. Midbrain has got cranial nerve 3. 3rd, 4th in midbrain, 5, 6, 7 in pons, 8, 9, everything else is in medulla. So, 3rd and 4th cranial nerve nuclei are located in the midbrain. So, that is the reason 3rd cranial nerve palsy will occur whenever the posture cerebral artery lead to development of ischemic injury is what need to be remembered. Now, the root values are very important, doctor. Supinator biceps are C5, C6. Triceps is C7, C8. So, if the biceps is absent, deep and on reflex, but your supinator is showing hyperreflexia, that means where is the lesion? In the neck, C5, C6 level. Suppose if your supinator is uh, reflexic, biceps is normal, but your finger extensor reflex is brisk. That means where is the level? C7, C8. Uh, uh, sorry, not supinator, triceps. Triceps reflex if it is hyper reflexing and biceps and supinator are reflexing, then the level is at uh, C5, C6. At the level of the at the level of the lesion, it will become a reflexing. Below the level of the lesion, it becomes hyperreflexic. Right? But T1 supplies finger extensors. If those reflex is brisk, but your triceps reflex is reflexic, that means the level is at the level of C7, C8. Understand now? Huh? Fundamentally, neurologists are like electricians. They look at all plug points and decide where is the connection gone. So, you have C5, C6 going and supplying the biceps and uh, the supinator. C7, C8 is the one which is supplying the triceps. C A T1 is the one which is supplying the finger extensors. Simple way that you do is C by C6 if it is if the biceps is a reflexic, triceps uh, sorry supinator is a reflexic, but triceps is hyperreflexic. Level is at C by C6. If the C by C6 these two are normal, but triceps is a reflexic. But finger extensors are hyperreflexic. The level is at C7, C8. If the finger extensors are irreflexic, but all the above ones are normal, then the level is at C8, T1. So that's how deep tendon reflexes are used to know and localize what is the level of the lesion in the spinal spinal cord whenever there is any compression or spondylosis or anything. What is the most common location for cervical spondylosis? C5, C6. So, best thing is any patient sitting with a neck collar in neurosurgery 
ப்ரீ ஆபரேட்டிவ் வார்டு இஸ் தி பெஸ்ட் பிளேஸ் ரைட் மோஸ்ட் காமன் லொகேஷன் சி பை சி சிக்ஸ் யூ ஆஸ்க் லெட் மீ செக் அண்ட் தென் செக் த பைசெப்ஸ் எரிஃப்ளெக்சிக் எக்ஸ்டென்ஸ் ஹைப்பர் ரிஃப்ளெக்சிக் ட்ரைசெப்ஸ் ஹைப்பர் ரிஃப்ளெக்சிக் தென் டேக் அவுட் ஹிஸ் எம்ஆர்ஐ அண்ட் தென் சி வேர் இஸ் த சி ஃபை சி சிக்ஸ் லீஷன் ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் கேசஸ் தேக்னஸ் ஐ யூ விக்கம் சாம்பியன் ரைட் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபைவ் இயர் ஓல்ட் பிரெஸ்ட் கேன்சர் ராடிகுலர் பெயின் டு த லெக்ஸ் யூரினல் ரிட்டென்ஷன் and uh, saddle anesthesia absent ankle jerk whenever radical pain is there it is more like a cauda equina what is cauda equina below the spinal cord the fine fibers of the sacral level are coming out so that lead to radical pain conus medullaris behaves more like upper motor neuron type like spinal cord is interrupted then as uh, Cauda equina behaves more like lower motor neuron type with eriflexia etc etc. This is a big, uh, once more a big story is there. You should understand how the conus medullaris look, cauda equina look like, what are the differences, what is the table, 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 what is the table. All this we have in the anatomy to medicine.com video library. Right? So in neurology, there will be a topic called cauda equina conus medullaris simply in the anatomymedicine.com when you type after going into the video library you can identify the topic click you have got the teacher in the pocket half an hour bol bol ke jata kya hai cauda equina kya hai conus medullaris ha huh? kiska story kya hai after that you just go to the davidson quickly flip the pages you will make it but you need to do all that exercise after the test is over that gaps fill up karna lower pneumonia productive cough alcoholic klebsiella pneumonia is a classical lesion after mid esophageal biopsy for a benign disease there is esophageal perforation and the leakage what do you want to do don't give anything by mouth D- give total parental nutrition and wait for 5 days repeat the study god will take care of suturing that hole that you created once more right pray allah mia so that's what you need to do falkland formula in infant head is how much head is 18% lower extremities are 8 14% generally one parkland formula based question will come in burns so you have to be 100% sure for a elective surgery what is the major contraindication myocardial infarction within the last 6 months not 12 months is a contraindication so you must know all the list regarding the fluid and electrolyte balance uh, typically 2500 ml will be the one which will contain be a normal daily intravenous fluid requirement so 1.5 ml per kg per hour 1.5 ml into 70 kg into 24 hours is 2520 is the requirement of the fluid in a 70 kg individual so these are some of the basics doctor which uh, a nurse will be knowing in fact better than us as house surgeons at least we should prove that we know better than them right so enteral nutrition typically can lead to abdominal cramps and diarrhea if you put a rail tube or uh, you put a jejunostomy tube or a gastrostomy tube so diarrhea and abdominal cramps can be a important side effect the abdominal wound deficiency if you take the risk factors a jaundiced patient is at a greater risk of poor wound healing in aspiration pneumonia uh if you do an emergency surgery you didn't prepare the gut unlike elective surgery obviously aspiration will be more common if you have done a emergency surgery than elective ye kuch question nahi hai kya ha fada fat answer kar sakte a paraesophageal hiatus hernia if you take it is more common than the uh, sorry it is less common than the sliding hiatus hernia is what you need to remember 
then uh, gastric carcinoma it is a less lesser curvature of the stomach which is a common location for the development of gastric carcinoma ascending cholangitis cholangitis cholecystitis difference kya cholecystitis is gall bladder inflammation cholangitis is bile ductal inflammation so it can be treated endoscopically is what you need to basically appreciate and what is the cause of the cholangitis commonly bile duct stones or a stricture is the underlying cause how can you relieve that you can do endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography um, along with the sphincterotomy and stone extraction so endoscopically you have to treat a pilonidal sinus which is very common um, the age group is at puberty is what need to be remembered and those men who are very hairy hirsute men are the ones who are at the risk of developing it and what is the reason for this pilonidal sinus in uh, the skin it is the hair growth and increased sebaceous activity obviously with the puberty when testosterone start producing the sebum production also increases and that acts as a risk factor for pilonidal sinus now drugs in vascular disease so if you use aspirin or you don't use aspirin there is a huge difference if you use aspirin the morbidity mortality is much lesser in the people compared to the people who have coronary artery disease in home you have not used it now patient has got a cerebrovascular disease giddiness vomiting ghumna pura duniya ghum rahe doctor haibat haibat ho rahe doctor kaun bolta possessive artery wale middle cerebral artery wale zyada hangama machate nahi chup chap heavy plegic and waiting for you to take start manitol right anti cerebral artery occlusion tell you otherwise all right only thing is they'll have a contralateral monoparesis of the lower limb so they'll be dragging their leg and everyone think it's a orthopedic problem so that's what you need to remember if you take the dvt after the dvt post thrombophlebitic syndrome it is called as the veins lose their competence to pump the blood up so the venous stasis occur and that predisposes to ulceration of the overlying skin so most important thing you have to tell to the patient after dvt recovery is religiously they should wear the long stockings there is a only protection in long term that they will that will save them and if the venous edema is significant and uh, sometimes there is also a pump available to push the fluid up if the venous stasis is not properly attended that can even lead to a terminal loss of limb also so that's the reason simple thing if they wear the uh, stockings religiously nothing will happen prostatic cancer if skeletal metastases are there then prostate specific antigen levels typically become increased transitional cell carcinoma so uh how does it typically present it doesn't present in a advanced stage initially and uh, uh you can use uh, bcg thiotepa and all these options are available only when it is advanced and invasive in the late stages then the radical surgery is the requirement a patient has got a fibrocystic breast disease so there are many choices available for the fibrocystic breast disease what is that called andy aberrations in normal development and involution of the breast normally breast is a continuously growing regrowing and uh, uh, organ so during the process of uh, the breast regrowing there can be few aberrations that can occur that can lead to fibrocystic breast disease which typically premenstrually become very painful 
So in that scenario, what uh, need to be done? Primrose oil, linoleic acid, right? Preventing too much salted foods because if you take a lot of salty foods, then that lead to fluid retention. Fluid retention increases the worsening of the pain in fibrocystic disease. So these are all the various options available. Okay. Then regarding liver transplantation, biliary atresia is a indication in children, not in adults. That's what you need to understand. In renal transplantation, we very much use uh, uh, typically the uh, tacrolimus. I think that's a different question. 60% uh, survival is too much promise that you are giving to patient uh, if you do cadaveric transplantation, right? So, regarding transplant rejection, both HLA 1 and 2 are not really required in order to prevent the rejection. One matching is most important. Then, acute lung injury for you to define. Acute lung injury lead to pulmonary edema. Congestive heart failure lead to pulmonary edema. Acute lung injury is a problem of capillary permeability leading to development of pulmonary edema. Congestive heart failure, rise of the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure in the left atrium pressure when it is increased that will transmit to capillaries and rise of the pressure will lead to edema. That is the cause in, in uh, congestive heart failure, LV failure. Whereas in acute lung injury, left heart is okay, but toxic uh, agents and cytokines, they increase the permeability of the capillaries and even though the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is not elevated, that lead to seepage of the fluid from the pulmonary capillaries and lead to pulmonary edema. So how do you differentiate acute lung injury from that of uh, um, left ventricular failure? How many didn't understand? It's little difficult to follow a teacher who waves the hands in the air and uh, half the time gone into what he is uh, up to, right? I know. Whiteboard is a better thing. Let's talk. So you have a left heart, left atrium, pulmonary capillaries are draining into it. If the left ventricle fails, left atrium pressure rises and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure increases and that leads to development of edema, pulmonary edema. That is scenario 1. Scenario 2, you are having sepsis or you are having infection that releases cytokines. Those cytokines come and increase the capillary permeability. Permeability. And that leads to development of edema. But here, PCWP is normal. Whereas, left ventricular failure, PCWP is elevated. That's how you differentiate. Okay, Doc? So, PCWP less than 19 is the part of the definition. Now, if you remove ruptured appendix, that has leakage of the pus into peritoneal cavity. How do you want to, what, what do you want to call it as? That is called as healing by third intention. Otherwise called delayed primary intention. Where you closed a wound which is grossly contaminated at the incisional site. Then that is basically called third intentional healing. First intentional examples, second intentional examples. So, sub Bailey and Love may. Fundamentals. Similarly, uh, clean wound, clean contaminated wound, contaminated wound, dirty wound, all those definitions and examples that you have to be sure. One question will come. Hmm? Now, what is wrong about the fluid management? In a post cardiac bypass patient, you can very much give a colloid. So, it is not a contraindication. So, when do you want to give crystalloids? Whenever you want to increase the intravascular space and you give ringer lactate, all these are the classical example of crystalloids. Then colloid, 
it is basically used to stimulate the liver and that releases albumin which will create an oncotic pressure and holds the plasma inside the vessel and uh, increases the plasma volume effectively. So that's the purpose of colloid, right? Then uh, conjoined tendon ko agar inguinal ligament se mila ke suture mare to, what is the technique called as? Bessonese repair. So you should also go through the literature, what is shoulderizes, ogilvies, and what are the advantages, disadvantages, recurrence rates, all the tingual hernia stuff, surgery stuff is a favorite topic in exam. So we already have a discussion in surgery in the video library. I'm going to say that same thing once more. You have to go and review that. The Sunday test is trying to catch, precipitate where you are falling short, where you need to rise big. About femoral hernia, typically 1 is to 2 is the ratio, not 2 is to 1. Pentalogy can of cantrel has a omphalocele, not a gastroschis. String sign, there are two string signs, one string sign of cantor, which is seen in case of the inflammatory bowel disease. Another string sign is in the case of congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis ultrasound may where that hypertrophied pylorus will narrow down the uh, pyloric canal into a very thin string like appearance on ultrasound. That is what you see in congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Then uh, during the migration in our embryonic life when we are inside the mother's womb, all our guts are outside our belly and slowly they will be pushed in, right? So we are lucky that way. At every stage of life, we should consider lucky, right? If uh, a little gut remained outside, what would have been uh, no entrances? Life has got different challenges to face. So there is a reason, uh, be sure. Uh, 270 degrees, once more, it will clockwise rotate and migrate not 90 degrees. Meckel's diverticulum lead to painless rectal bleeding, not painful. That's what you need to appreciate. Then uh, regarding tacrolimus, it can very much be given in the management of liver transplant. Now doctor, a 36 year old woman diagnosed with ectopic pregnancy and her abdomen shows tenderness in the lower quadrant without any rebound, tenderness or guarding. So what is the best course of action in her case? And she was given methotrexate to treat her ectopic pregnancy. To any woman who you, whom you give methotrexate, abdominal pain is not an uncommon finding while you are treating ectopic pregnancy. But that does not always mean rupture. If rupture would have been though there in ectopic pregnancy, anyway there is no role for medical management. But patient can tell, doctor you gave me methotrexate and you told that medically my ectopic can be managed. Now I have got such a severe abdominal pain doctor. I was going through the Google doctor and found uh, abdominal pain with an ectopic. Proven ectopic means it is a ruptured ectopic. Uh, I am supposed to be in operation theater. No, why I am sitting in this movie theater? So she gives you a call at midnight, then you should tell nothing to worry, uh, you come down to hospital, I will see what you have. So then uh, no rebound tenderness, you have done ultrasound, so it is not ruptured. So methotrexate associated abdominal pain is not uncommon which deserves a good observation. Now what is the most accurate statement about uh, posture placenta? If the placenta is posterior, then it is uh, uh, having less risk of accreta compared to that of the anterior placenta prior. Why? Because anterior placenta is the place where you do at the time of caesarean incision. So if the placenta next pregnancy goes and falls anterior, it will penetrate that scar and accreta is more likely to happen in a anterior placenta previa is what you need to understand. A 22 year old 
with barrier method of contraception, then what is the likely possibility of a pathogen which is involved? Chlamydia, trichomeris is the one which is uh, most often associated with this scenario. Uh, sorry. 22 year old with barrier method of contraception, right? Okay. 36 year old at 10 weeks of gestation has vaginal bleeding and whitish substance which is meat like and she continues to have the cramp and her cervix is 2 centimeters dilated and she has 10 weeks gestation. So what is the possibility? A open cervical ass with a history of passing tissues is consistent with a incomplete abortion which is an indication for doing a dilatation and curettage is what you need to understand. Maternal gestational diabetes is a risk factor for a macrosomic baby who is vulnerable to uh, show shoulder dystocia. Now, a 34 year old woman, fetal head is retracted towards the maternal introitus. Then what is this, uh, what is the maneuver that will help in this given scenario? So typically patient has got a shoulder dystocia in the given question. So you need to do Macroberts maneuver, which is the suprapubic pressure uh, is the one which you need to basically apply. So posture fetal arm uh, delivery has been done. So uh, what is the mechanism for uh, doing that? If you do the posture fetal arm delivery, then you will decrease the uh, fetal bony diameter from shoulder to axilla so that it can easily negotiate through the maternal pelvic outlet. So that is the idea behind doing the posture shoulder uh, delivery. So all those maneuvers, Dr. Macrobots, Pinots, Mauritius Similiweet maneuver, Lovesitz maneuver, all these things you should you should be 100% sure. One of the maneuver, now picture based questions, they can come from any of them. The Mac robot maneuver is utilized. So, you, what is the purpose of doing that suprapubic pressure, etc.? So, it is the anterior rotation of the symphysis pubis which will increase the space for the delivery of the baby, which is the underlying mechanism of doing the macrobert. So, you will be flattening the lumbar spine and uh, anterior rotation of symphysis pubis and that will relieve the anterior shoulder from impaction to the fetal anterior shoulder which is impacted against the maternal pubis uh, that become dislodged and the baby can continue to come out. So that is the whole idea. Now which is a risk factor for uh, cervical cancer? Early age of coitus. And what is the indication for doing a pap smear? 21 or 3 years from the onset of sexual intercourse. So this is the typical indication. A 36 year old has pap smear showing severe cervical dysplasia. What is the next best step that you can do? Obviously colposcopic directed biopsy is the one which you need to do. A 36 year old G2P1 woman at 39 weeks has got active labor and a 10 minute episode of bradycardia and uh, etc. Her cervix is closed. So what do you want to basically do? Whenever fetal bradycardia is there, you have to differentiate it. Um, uh, I mean first you need to check the maternal pulse and uh, 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 compare, I mean, in sync with that. So, in this given case also, assess the metal pulse is considered to be the first step in the management and uh, evaluation of a bradycardiac episode. Now, intrahepatic cholestasis versus viral hepatitis versus pup pluritic articarial papules and pustules of pregnancy, right, and HELLP syndrome. 
hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, low platelet count syndrome and acute fatty liver of pregnancy. If five conditions ke beech mein, which will recur, which will not recur, when will they appear, what is the prognosis, all these stable of these five conditions which I told, you must be sure with. So increased perinatal uh, morbidity is a challenge if there is a intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. Now appendicitis versus PID. What is the most important thing to make a diagnosis? So laparoscopy is a gold standard. It's a Supreme Court judgment to um, identify whether the what we are handling with the abdominal rigidity in the patient is due to appendicitis which ruptured or whether it is a pelvic inflammatory disease is what need to be understood. Last three questions for the today's evening. What is the risk factor for PID? So nulliparity is considered to be one of the important risk factors uh, with an increased risk of developing pelvic inflammatory disease. 26 year old at 30 weeks of gestation has got pulmonary embolism. So on EKG what is the most common sign on ECG? Sinus tachycardia. What is the characteristic sign of the ECG for pulmonary embolism? S1, Q3, T3 is the characteristic, not most common. Sinus tachycardia is most common, is what you need to understand. Now, there is a metal herpes simplex infection. So, you want to evaluate it and you want to do caesarean. What is an indication? If the active lesions are found in the labia, then Vertical transmission is very high when the baby is passing through the birth canal. So that becomes an indication for cesarean which decreases the risk of vertical transmission. A 32 year old at 39 weeks of gestation who had myomectomy for infertility previously, the fetal head which was previously at plus 2 has now come down to minus 3. So sudden change in the fetal position possibility is uterine rupture. So that is a typical diagnosis. So thanks for a patient listening doctor. Remaining questions please review through the notes given and uh, not this Monday, next Monday onwards we will be starting our All India uh, last 15 years uh, question papers subject wise discussion morning 9 to evening 6 and 5. So take a chance to invite even your friends, come down and uh, we will tear apart the AIPG question bank with a proper autopsy and uh, get more thorough to face the need PG. At most a little difference will be questions which are asked as sentences are asked as images but the topics remain the same high yield. In a topic, the issues also which the examiner want to test remains the same, right? You need to get a thorough mastery on those issues and in those specific topics. So thanks for a patient listening.